Kyle Larson once again is your race winner in the Cup Series, this time coming at Watkins Glen. He holds off a hard charging Chase Elliott and has tied Denny Hamlin in the regular season point standings after earning his fifth win. Now let's take a look at our fantasy results from the week of Watkins Glen. So much for picking Team Penske this week. None of their cars scored a top 10. Brad Keselowski quickly sinked to the very bottom after that pole position. He would go for a total of three spins. One of those took out his teammate, Joey Logano, which I had in this lineup. After winning the first stage, Joey was in prime position to get lots of points until that incident, which really brought down Joey's points. For a moment there, I thought he was going to match the likes of Barton Truex Jr. I knew from the very start Ryan Blaney would be a big gambler at Watkins Glen, and his struggles at these tracks in 2021 have continued. One thing I do need to mention in all my lineups, and I should have done this a lot sooner, is all the roster changes I make after uploading these videos. For example, the Jack of Wars lineup, I swapped out Christopher Bell in favor of Ross Chastain. During pre-race inspection, Chase Elliott and Christopher Bell failed it, and they both had to start from the back. That's where all these changes are coming from. And we'll talk more about those changes after we look at the tremendous results from Waste Elliott. It's an excellent pick having Kyle Larson for your final pick here at Watkins Glen instead of Michigan. Even with this being my final Kyle Larson play for Waste Elliott, this was more than worth the result. And without that Joey Logano Brad Kozlowski incident, who would have known how much this would have gotten? Dare I say record breaking? For sure, it would have been up there in the 260s with how good the lineup was. All the way down to the bonus picks. We got multiple top manufacturers right, not just the race winner. Moving to pick Stenhouse, another 200 point day. And that's even with swapping out Kyle Busch in favor of Alex Bowman, which I ended up garaging. Yeah, this one not relating to the pre-race inspection. I felt I needed a driver that was more closer to the front of the starting grid. This is the other of my lineups that spent its final Kyle Larson play, and also a good surprise result from Kevin Harvick. You could have easily kept him out of your lineup, but here, he does an outstanding job in being that starter four driver to get good points. Even though Chevy did pretty decent, the likes of Chase Briscoe and Matt Benedetto getting good 30 points, and this is the only Christopher Bell picks left standing after pre-race inspection. With the usage situation for no Chevy, I felt I had to keep Christopher Bell in this lineup gotta say good call. It meant that all I had to do for this lineup was garage Michael McDowell, which hopefully he'll be in better use for the next three races. And lastly, Jaguars World Network is the final lineup to make sure they have more points than Jaguars won. This one benefiting from the prowess of Joe Gibbs Racing at Watkins Glen. We expend our final Denny Hamlin play here for a respectable 43 point payout. One of three Kyle Busch plays this roster has left is off the board. With the entire starters looking good after stage 2, it meant all I had to do was garage Kurt Busch as the only driver in the roster to not earn any stage points. And was also another change I made. Like with Jack of Wars 1, I swapped out Christopher Bell, but for World Network, Kurt was the replacement for Bell. As for the top 8 with the most points from Watkins Glen, I wasn't kidding last week when I said Joe Gibbs Racing was going to put up a lot of points, and all four of their cars earned no less than 39. Right alongside the surprise result of Kevin Harvick, you got William Byron. He blows it out of the water here at Watkins Glen for his best road course finish of the season with 6th, which makes me really curious, can Byron get the same exact result for Indianapolis as we race in its road course configuration for this Sunday. Now with another road course, the playoff cut line might see the same changes and movements as we did with Watkins Glen, which was Tyler Reddick earning a few more points than Austin Dillon, as well as Kevin Harvick, and Matt Benedetto and Ross Chastain closing the gap on Chris Buescher for that second driver out of the playoff grid. Moving into our tier list, I think it's best to play most of the drivers you played at Watkins Glen, that being Chase Elliott and whoever you got available for Joe Gibbs Racing, but if the on-screen captions isn't enough to let you know, this entire video is recorded before any on-track action, such as practice and qualifying. So keep up with my Twitter to see any changes to my lineups that I'm for sure going to make after this video goes up. For now, let's cover our top plays. I don't need to tell you that Chase Elliott should be your absolute must play for this week. As for one, it's a road course, albeit an inaugural one, which he exceptionally does very good at. But right behind him in my recommendations, it's gotta be Christopher Bell, which 37% of the player base would agree on. Bell finished a runner-up in the Road America race, the last inaugural road course we had. Now after getting spun out by Kyle Larson at Watkins Glen, I feel Bell has a lot of redemption to live up to, and that I feel is a good enough reason to suspect that Bell's gonna have another good road course result. Now he hasn't earned double-digit stage points at road courses, not since the Charlotte Roval last year, but he's for the most part made up for it in his finishing result. 
He's finished top 10 in half of the road courses that were ran this year. And if you're absolutely spent on the big name plays such as Kyle Larson or Denny Hamlin, then this is my first recommendation for that. As looking at our blind spot plays, these are some of my next recommendations behind Bell in terms of play saving, such as the likes of Tyler Reddick, Ross Chastain, Chase Briscoe, and even AJ Allmendinger. But at only 21% ownership, I have Kyle Busch in this category. Now one thing Kyle does have going for him at Indianapolis, it's simply the fact that this race has practice and qualifying, which races that have that, Kyle's been doing exceptionally well at. For all of his struggles at Nashville, he still put up good results there. And of course, Circuit of the Americas, alongside Chase Elliott, he was very much in contention for the win. Now, the 18 car's ownership may spike up, especially after what we might see from him after qualifying and practice. And as a result, this could be much less of a blind spot play and more of a top play. But I surmise many players are going to be on their final Kyle Busch play, which they're going to be reserving for Michigan. And if we learned anything from Kyle Larson and Denny Hamlin last week, it's that maybe Kyle Busch could earn more points here than opposed to Michigan. And I would try my hands here first. And then if you end up garaging him in this race, then you got Michigan. In your long shot plays, there's a lot of road course ringers here that have had one-off results in 2021. Daniel Suarez has yet to have his breakout result other than the Bristol Dirt Race, and I really thought it would come at one of the road courses. Sonoma is alright, but leaves a little to be desired. But I can strongly believe that Matt Benedetto has to be the strongest driver from this group. He's gotten no less than 27 points in the last two road course races. Now given his points position standings, and what he needs to do in order to make the playoffs, he might not gun for that many stage points and instead go for the win, but I don't think he's going to be punting every single stage point he has a chance at getting. I think regardless, he's going to stumble onto a few stage points and put up a good top 10 result. Something to the likes of Watkins Glen, maybe even better than that. Caution plays, these are all drivers that didn't look all that special last week, or in their last starts at the road course have been pretty flat at. The only exception here is William Byron, he graduates from avoid to now a caution play, after the result he put up at Watkins Glen. And then there's Kurt Busch, which all season long, I've been struggling to figure out exactly when his best results are going to come at. On one hand, he can pull out a surprise result at the Daytona road course, and then go to the very next road course at Circuit of the Americas, and then having that devastating stating mistake where he overshot turn 12. You can have two fantastic results from Sonoma and Road America to then having a very forgetful 13th place finish with no stage points. This is quite the gamble play indeed for Kurt Busch, and out of the three tracks remaining in the regular season, I think your best bets are at this track, as opposed to Michigan and Daytona, although the consideration for Michigan is very close. I feel at best, if you're going to play Kurt Busch, you better have him in the garage, and then pair him with some premium plays that you have one use remaining for, such as a Alex Bowman, a William Byron, or a Denny Hamlin. I wouldn't per se build my lineup around Kurt, that would go more to Chase Elliott, Martin Truex Jr., and Joey Logano, but if you can find room for Kurt after including those three drivers I just mentioned, then possibly you can find something out of Kurt. But in terms of sleeper picks, I'd rather go from the Tyler Reddick, Christopher Bell, Ross Chastain, and Chase Briscoe camps. The avoid group is pretty easy, all these drivers haven't put up very good road course results, and really have struggled on all of them in 2021. Ryan Blaney's having a hard time even scoring a top 15 at most road course races this year. With the rest of this list, you can copy and paste what I said in Watkins Glen's video. But new from that list is Brad Keselowski. That same Brad Keselowski that started on pole for the Watkins Glen race, spun out three times, and out of all of that, finished 35th, and not a single stage point earned. Now, never mind that result, even before it, Kozlowski's been very unimpressive, and since the Daytona road course, he hasn't posted a result more than 25 points. Now, if you want my recommendation on when you should play Kozlowski in this remaining regular season, it's gotta come at either Michigan or Daytona. Joey Logano, maybe Austin Sindrick should be your only considerations from the Team Penske camp, with Kozlowski being your last bet. Time to make your picks. As I said before, these are all my pre-practice and qualifying lineups. And for Jack of Wars 1, most of our driver usages are at one remaining. Martin Truex and Ryan Blaney have two left. With Kevin Harvick's three left, I might just use at Michigan and leave it at that. I may lean on Tyler Reddick for the rest of this regular season, leading right into Daytona. Which for the lineup itself, that's my starter one. Chase Elliott, we gotta get our final play in here. 
The same goes for Joey Logano, and the second to last one for Martin Truex Jr. And really just looking at this entire lineup, usages or not, I think this is what I would roll with anyways. Reddick, Chastain, and Bell have been pretty good at road courses as of late, and should give me more than respectable results. Picking the top four driver has been all over the place in the last two months. One week it's Ryan Blaney, the other it's Eric Almirola for crying out loud. Now I could have easily went with Joey Logano for here, being it that it's a road course, but stashing Chase Briscoe here might not be a very bad option either. He won those honors back at Road America. Similar story with Top Toyota. I feel Christopher Bell might be a stronger Toyota pick than, say, Martin Truex Jr. No more Kyle Larson for Waste Elliott. Not that I'm complaining, he put out a good, good result from his final play. And explaining the lineup, even though Alex Bowman and Kurt Busch are coming off cold results at Watkins Glen, at least one of those should have a turnaround result. It might come from Alex Bowman more so than Kurt. And I really mean it when I say Chase Briscoe might be a very strong forward, right up there with Joey Logano. And good enough to include him here in this lineup. Unlike Jaguars, this one has multiple Kyle Busch plays left, and we'll expend one here. As much as I could easily save my final Kyle Busch play for this lineup for Michigan, we'll see what spending it at Indianapolis will get us. For most of my lineups, it would be nice to have one Truex play left. In a few cases, none. But at two left, we'll try and get one here this weekend. Also, if I haven't mentioned this, or if it's worth mentioning, all of my lineups are going to be picking Chase Elliott to win. In Pick Stenhouse, we're still awaiting the final Ricky Stenhouse Jr. to be spent, but honestly, it might come at Daytona, especially with how that 47 car has been running in the last few weeks. I'd prefer Michigan, but that's his fifth worst track on average. Now, Pick Stenhouse does have two Kyle Busch plays, and really, as I record it, I might just sub him in somewhere in here for this lineup, but we'll see for sure after practice and qualifying. Preferably, I'd sub him in for either Chase Briscoe or AJ Allmendinger. No Chevy's usages are getting expended fast, but not as fast as, say, Joey Logano. I'm still at two left, and I have to use one more at either Michigan or Daytona. For Brad Keselowski, those final two will have to come at Michigan and Daytona, and in hopes to get even all of Michael McDowell's plays in, I have to start this week as well. So with those limited usages, it's going to be pretty simple. Just pick the best drivers available, and even take advantage of Austin Cendrick starting. I'll give this lineup the same bonus picks that Jaguars 1 has, in hopes that this lineup has the best day it can have. Jaguars World Network, in terms of usages, is pretty much on the same track as Jaguars 1. The main difference is that this lineup has one Kyle Busch play, whereas Jaguars 1 has a Denny Hamlin play. And really no need to go that different from Jaguars 1. We'll copy and paste the starters and garage, all the way down to the bonus picks. Which, there's one difference. Top forward. We'll go with the safer pick in Joey Logano, instead of Chase Briscoe. So that's my picks for the Indianapolis Road Course, the inaugural race that will be held this weekend. It'll kick off with practice this Saturday morning at 8 o'clock. Qualifying is on Sunday morning at 6 a.m., with the race kicking off at 10 a.m. Of course, all these are in Pacific Standard Time. Enjoy the inaugural road course race at Indianapolis. Should be a fun one. After this week, our one and only Michigan race is next Sunday. Thank you for watching this video. Good luck in fantasy as always, and I'll catch you next time.